Good morning, Memphis in the Mid-South. I'm Jason Carter. LJ is off today. It's Thursday, May the 3rd, and right now it's 5 o'clock. Fox 13 Scott Mattis is following our top story this morning. Good morning, Scott. Hey, thanks a lot, Scott. And Mayor Greg Davis makes a court appearance. We'll tell you what happened. Plus, the lion and the baby. A lion tries with all his might to get to eat a kid. Goodness. Good morning, Double E. Hey, Jason Carter. Well, one day only, we are the man show. <laughs> yes, we are, baby. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot, Ed. And the Memphis Grizzlies take game two after losing the first one of the playoffs. The Grizz got it together, clinching a victory. Grizz Nation is pumped about the win. Fox 13 Scott Mattis is live at the FedEx Forum with, uh, well, there's no fans there right now, Scott, but uh, I'm sure the excitement is still kind of exuding from the forum. Oh, it sure is, Jason. Good morning. You can still feel the electricity. Hey, thanks a lot, Scott. And the time now is 5.03. An accused rapist will face a judge this morning. Police have charged 41-year-old Anthony Aliano with the rape of a woman, but suspect he could be responsible for several more that date back more than a decade in the Cordova area. He was identified last weekend by a tipster as being the person caught on camera using a stolen credit card. The card was taken in the 2010 rape and knife point robbery of a 27-year-old woman in Cordova. Neighbors of the woman say they're now breathing a sigh of relief. Investigators say it's possible Aliano is the same person. DNA evidence has linked one person to six rapes in Cordova between 2003 and 2010. Also in court this morning, a mother and daughter duo. 41-year-old Sherry Booker is accused of stabbing her daughter's manager. She is charged with aggravated assault. Her daughter, Ashley Booker, is charged with facilitating aggravated assault. Tuesday night, the two went to Don Don's Hot Wings in Austin P to collect some items left by her daughter. That's when an altercation started, we're told from police, inside the store, and the manager was stabbed. Sherry Booker admitted to police she stabbed the manager with a box cutter. Time now, 5.05, .05, and fire investigators are trying to determine what sparked a fire at the former home of Isaac Hayes. The fire started around 6 last night on the 9200 block of River Ridge Road in Cordova. As many as 50 firefighters from Shelby County, Memphis, and Germantown fire departments helped battle the blaze. Hardeman County deputies need your help finding Adam Christopher Mays. The Sheriff's Department says Mays may know where Joanne Bain and her three daughters are. Mays is from Guntown, Mississippi. Bain and her three kids disappeared last Friday. Now Mays is missing too. The Sheriff says Mays is Joanne Bain's family friend. He says Mays lied to investigators when they questioned him about the case. Now there's a warrant out for him. Three days after Bain and her kids disappeared, they found her Dodge Durango and collected DNA evidence inside. Sheriff Doolin says there's no sign of foul play, but they're not going to rule it out either. He says the family planned to move to Arizona last weekend. Well, there's big changes in South Haven Mayor Greg Davis's misdemeanor traffic case, and out of the county judge and prosecutor will likely be asked to preside over the case. Fox 13's Jill Monier has more. And coming up, a baby bear takes a fall out of a tree. See what broke his fall. But first, the lion wants a little boy for breakfast. The adorable video after the break. You're watching Fox 13's Good Morning Memphis. Good morning, Memphis in the Mid-South. I'm Jason Carter. It is May the 2nd hump it day. It is. Uh, good morning. I'm Lauren Johnson, 5 o'clock, Fox 13. Scott Mattis following our top story this morning. Hey, Scott. Hey, good morning, Scott. A Memphis family tragedy, a baby girl shot and killed, who police say pulled the trigger. The time is now 5.05, .05, and Tennessee lawmakers pass a new spending plan worth $31.5 billion dollars. But Republicans took heat for lumping in several pork bell projects, like the $500,000 one-time grant for a music museum in Virginia. But this year's budget did come in under budget, kind of speak. It was expected to top $31.9 billion, $400 million more than the plan now sitting on the governor's desk, despite a pay increase for state workers. You'll be glad to know that taxes on food did go down and the inheritance tax will disappear within the next four years. And Tennessee doesn't want any part of the president's new health care law. The House followed the Senate's lead Tuesday to join a multi-state compact challenging the federal health care law. 
The bill provides a waiver for each participating state to create its own health care system. Critics say this breaks federal law, but the sponsors say it's just another option for Tennesseans. The move has to be signed by the governor before the state can participate. And it's a symbolic day in the war on terror, the anniversary of the death of Osama bin Laden. Yeah, but violence broke out in Afghanistan just hours after President Barack Obama's surprise visit to the region to honor that mm -hmm. day. Fox News' Ainsley Earhart has details. All right, still to come this morning on Good Morning Memphis, Family Feud Pet Edition. Some family members just could not share. Find out if anyone won. <laughs> Plus, sky hacking. Ever heard of it? We'll show you the extreme sport that's gaining popularity. Plus, the amazing landing. You're watching Fox 13's Good Morning Memphis. All right, we're following breaking news this morning out of Germantown. Yeah, a well-known restaurant owner is in a standoff with a SWAT team in Germantown right now. It's all going down inside a home on Creek Bridge Drive. The man has barricaded himself inside his home. And just outside there, we find Fox 13 Scott Mattis, who's on the scene. Hey, Scott, can you give us the very latest of what's going on right now? It is now 5.03, and Craigmont High School will reopen this morning after yesterday's bomb explosions. The school warns that security will be, quote, vigilant. While students head back to class, two of their classmates are going to be in court this morning charged in the explosion. Police say 18-year-old Tarif Johnson and 18-year-old Leviticus Lacey set off two homemade bombs inside Craigmont. They face charges of aggravated assault, possession of a prohibited weapon, and reckless endangerment. All of those felonies. The bombs, police say, the two seniors brought into Craigmont injured an assistant principal and caused students to be evacuated. The assistant principal suffered an asthma attack and had to be taken to the hospital. But she was released last night. Now, this is the text to vote question this morning. Do the charges fit the crime? All these felonies. Text prank to 65636 to vote yes or no. And some parents say they're worried about sending their kids back to Craigmont High after two bombs exploded yesterday. Several students also say firecrackers went off on Wednesday. But MCS says none were reported. Some parents say they're frustrated with the series of incidents that they claim happened this week. They say they learned about the bombs through the news, not the school. Plus, they're disappointed at MCS disorganized dismissal of students. Now, a spokesperson with Memphis City School says parents were notified immediately through the Parent Link phone system. And we're going to be talking with people from the Ford Driving Skills for Life event. It's going to be happening this weekend. So tune in to see just how well Ed can drive under the influence <laughs> around the Liberty Bowl. Can it be done? I'm looking forward to seeing what Double E can do. I don't know. I don't you know. You know, I'm always under the influence. <laughs> Of what? <laughs> we get up crazy early. You got to do something. Of yeah. <laughs> um, no sleep? I'm sleep deprived, so you know I'm under some kind of influence. <laughs> Ed Eccles, you're a crazy man. All right. We're are gonna, we going to? We're going to go to break. Let's go are? to break. Let's All just right. say we'll see you in a few minutes. You're watching <laughs> Fox 13's Good Morning Memphis.